YouTube. It's actually been about a week. So I've been trying to familiarize myself with this game as much as possible. So if you're watching this video on YouTube, I apologize if some of the things I'm saying are doing now are slightly different than the things I said I was doing 10 seconds ago, because in real life, it's actually been a week. We're streaming live twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. Come hang out. It's a good time. Sometimes people do things and there's noises and stuff and we get to rename all of our cities. Cool names like Zulu. Uwu. So yeah, it's, it's a party. I'd come. I'd recommend it. So what we've done here is take London. This is a huge take for us. We are kind of encroaching on the British Empire and just rolling it over. Our siege tower strategy is still going to work for us. In Plymouth here, we have ancient walls, so we should just be able to come and roll over Plymouth pretty easily. Stoke-upon-Trent is not a city we'd keep, but we can roll that down pretty easy. And now we have to start choosing our next target. And I think obviously with the yields, 65 science, 32 culture, I don't think Matthias up here is going to put up much of a fight. So I think that's a good place for us to kind of go. And then we can deal with Greece and Egypt afterwards because they're more heavy hitters. They're going to take a little bit more work. We're probably going to need planes for them. What we're going to do here, though, is we've kind of set this up really, really well. What we can do right now is we can actually buy units with our faith. Now, we don't have a lot of faith per turn, but if I can buy two pike and shots here and have these pike and shots become armies, that would be a huge boost to us. And just making sure we can keep this momentum going, keep things rolling. And I think that's probably what we're going to do with our faith here is to make sure we upgrade these into armies as much as possible. The thing with Grandmaster's Chapel that's really nice is you can actually just buy the units in any city you want based on a few different things in the game that could be cheaper in some cities than others. But we can just buy them in London where our units already are. We don't have to like build them all the way over yonder and run them all the way down over here. I'm going to go for a consulate here. I think influence points per turns is very, very helpful. And I think getting those little bit of a golden faith bonuses so far is going to be nice for that city. And then from a trade route point of view, I don't really know where I want to hit. I suppose while we are allied with Cleopatra, getting the three science is fine. And 19 gold per turn is not too bad either. So I guess we'll take that. So I'm assuming that this loyalty will fix itself once we flip the turn, because now we have London for pressure up here. I do really want to grab the coffee up here. Let's move and do that. I don't want to get kind of blitzed here, but I do want to grab the coffee. And as expected, Newcastle upon Tyne has kept its loyalty, which is awesome. I really like this quick deals mod. I don't know if there's much. Does anyone want niter? Yeah, people want niter quite badly, actually. So let's do that a little bit. Let's get 20 niter out of the way. But we get 13 gold for 30 turns. It's absolutely worth it. By the time we even come up against their niter units, we're going to be feeling a lot better about ourselves. So that's great. Now what we want to do is actually buy some of these pike and shots. So what we can do here... I go for movement on this guy. What we can do here is we can actually purchase a pike and shot with faith because we have the Grandmaster's Chapel. And what's great about this too is you don't waste any promotions, right? Like we're not combining promoted units together where the promotions overlap. We're just simply keeping. Oh, do we not have armies yet? Four turns sell armies. That's all good. Four turns sell armies. Then we'll combine them all together. The point still stands though that we're still trying to do the same thing. I'm not sure a bank would be helpful here. I'm not sure any other district would be helpful. I just, Akonda's fine. Let's go for the Akonda. We'll get a little more science from the buildings. It's nice to have places to build units kind of all over. If we're going to have industrial zones, we might as well get the workshops going to make sure that that's all good. I'm not too worried about losing Brussels. We have Amani in there. I, I think I really would rather have Taruga, though, if I can help it. Also, getting a little bit of science in our Diplo quarter would be pretty huge. And I suppose we just keep on rolling. Like, I, I don't think we need to pause and do anything. I think the strategy is pretty simple. I think we just keep on keeping on, right? We'll come down. We'll take Plymouth. Plymouth is a city we're going to keep, but we're not going to keep Stoke upon Trent. Or how are you still getting Estergom? Okay, whatever. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I want to grab this coffee here. I would like that for the Empire, please. All right, Boom Shakalaka now has the government plaza. Nice and done. We have everything we need here. I don't think we're going to be settling this city up here. I can probably just get rid of these pins. It was a nice little pipe dream for us. I don't think it's necessary anymore. We have enough cities that we're taking. The more cities we settle, the more amenity problems we're going to have, and I just don't really want to deal with it. I think I'm going to build an archaeological museum in this city here because it has a high production. So I'll be able to build the archaeology archaeologist pretty quick. A big problem with the archaeological museum is that the archaeologist, you can only grab it in the city that you built the museum in. And if that city's not high production, it'll take forever or you have to pay, what is it, like 1600 gold? I think I feel comfortable though with an archaeological museum here and then I can just build an art museum in, in some other places if we absolutely need it. Probably try to get rid of these marshes down here and, and grab some farms. Now, do we need this city to do anything? I think the armory is a nice idea. We are losing out on some amenities though, which isn't ideal. That's going to really stop us. I mean, Cleo's got 250 
85 science, right? So we, we at some point we do have to catch up with her. I wonder if at some point we just can't keep going to war just because we won't have the amenities for it. Although we are collecting more amenities as we go along here. We are hopefully getting the Colosseum, which would be a huge boost for us. This temple is going to give us six faith and three food. I think that's worth it. All of our holy sites are just things we've inherited and we do want to be buying units with our faith. So I think having more faith is better. I could probably just take this pike and shot to take Stoke upon Trent on its own. I just don't know if I really want to do that. Uh, I can't attack yet till the siege tower is here next turn. So I shan't. I shan't attack. All right, fair play, fair play, crossbow, getting in here, hitting hard, striking true. I mean, it's really not going to help them. Yeah, maybe we just take Stoke upon Trent and, and get rid of it. That way, Estergom gets to go back to Hungary or wherever it's going. Great theater square up here. I think that's probably where I want to go. Oh, we already built the theater square down here. I'm going to build an art museum here, though. I think it's a lower production city, and so getting the archaeologist is going to be tough. Ooh, yes, they hit the crossbow. What a bunch of idiots. So you're going to promote here. I really like the combat strength, but there's something about the movement that's just... In this type of game where we're just trying to blitz people over and over again, I feel like the movement is very valuable. All right, you're going to move over and attack. You're going to move and attack. There we go. Ooh, next turn. If we take it next turn, this will become an army. If we take it next turn, it'll, it'll automatically become an army. So we're just going to wait a turn. I suppose I could have done this twice with Stoke Upon. I just made that. Okay, you know what? You know what? Let's pretend I didn't just do that after saying that I... Whatever. 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 It's fine. Ooh, England is gone! Yo! Bye, England. I definitely want to fully eliminate these people for the error score. Also, once you fully eliminate people... Yeah, we do get an army here. Once you fully eliminate people, you lose all the grievances against them, which is really nice. England will not stand the test of time. Sorry, England. So we could have gotten an army up here too. I'm an idiot. All right, you're going to come here and you're going to become an army. Now we have a bunch of armies, and that's pretty cool. Definitely get a builder in this area to get the double tobacco. That'd be a good industry. We have monarchy here. I think I like Merchant Republic better in almost every game. Nationalism was a huge grab for us. Civil engineering is a pretty big grab. I suppose I want civil engineering more. Neighborhoods are going to be massive for us as well. Yeah, I think I want civil engineering more than Merchant Republic. Might as well grab the chancery here. I'm interested in the Taj Mahal, although we haven't at all struggled for era score yet. So maybe that's a weird thing to be worried about. I wonder if getting Liang is worth it for the builders and just pumping out builders somewhere? I think it probably is. Content equals good will have a pretty high production. Maybe we eventually we can start pumping out builders there. Yeah, I think we just go and roll over Matthias while he's down. You know what I mean? Kick him while he's down. Don't let him get into the game. Heracles is gonna denounce us. So is Matthias, and that's fine. We like that for Matthias. Instantly creates a bombard unit with one promotion. I'm not super keen on that, but which, um, you cover Renaissance and Industrial Era. Which do you cover? Oh, Ren, okay. Yeah, we need this. Cool. You're gonna move to the front line. You're, you'll cover the pike and shots, but you'll also cover the next kind of level up. Logistics is very good. Industrial zone adjacency is very good. I don't think we're upgrading units right now, though. Yeah, I don't need these influence points anymore because we do have the Diplo quarter kind of doing its thing. 23 gold, 8 food, 8 production. Man, we have enough gold. I don't think the 23, I think the 8 food, 8 production will be better overall, especially now that we can just assign more trade routes to those cities and, and understand what's going on here. Extra luxury resources here. Cleo's going to give me loads for it, so I think that's great. Can I purchase? Is there any extra luxuries? No, no one has any extras. Do we build an entertainment complex nearby? I mean, I am worried about amenities on the whole, though. I think this is a very good commercial hub, though, so we'll do that. I'm going to buy this library here and i'll buy the university soon i think i'm ready to go to war here the siege tower is on its way it's gonna take a minute no matter what if we can get in a few pillages here while we're waiting that would be ideal what kind of walls does he have he's got medieval walls siege towers will still work against medieval walls it's the renaissance walls we got to watch out for so i am not too worried at all let's head in here we're declaring a war see ya mate no one expects the uh, pike and shot army inquisition let's go oh yeah we'll take that science baby we did get estergom is this a city we want to keep oh we don't have a choice we can either keep it or free it so i guess we're keeping it oh that kind of sucks i don't really want to keep this city because it's going to be an amenity drain but it does have a good campus so you know what we'll keep it it does have a good campus we don't have uh, any way to build we'll just lock that campus in after the monument's done we can get working on that oh a settler oh give me that 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 i want to come around this way so I don't get hit by the encampment as well. Yeah, we'll chuck an armory there. Eventually, we're going to want lots of military engineers. Definitely a university and then a workshop. I, I value getting the production as soon as possible. We need to catch up in science very quickly, though. We don't have many options. All right, we should be able to get an industry now. That'll really get Plymouth on the board. Plymouth is building a campus, which is great. Five food, four production, 19 gold, three science is fantastic for us. Hey, we have a vampire in the general area of where we're fighting. 
Oh, they abandoned the city. So now the siege tower can get in here. And now it's just an all out. Now it's just a slaughter, baby. There's Gior. We've got it. Oh, boy. Yeah, we got the Oracle. Woohoo! We did it. There's no... This, this isn't great planning. There's no districts in the Oracle City. Oh, there's a campus. We'll keep Gior. Instantly builds a bank and a market. Absolutely. We can use that in Boom Shakalaka. Yeah, let's just take the capital next. What's up here? Another good campus? Sure. I'll grab that industry in Plymouth and try and avoid this encampment and go around the long way. This is the one part of our strategy that's not super ideal is that we don't have a lot of ranged units to deal with this kind of stuff, but I think we'll be fine. So now we can get the wonder production card in. Do we need it though? I mean, we're building Coliseum, which is very important. Four turns left. I think at this point, it's not going to make much of a difference though. After this dam is done, let's grab a builder real quick. We got to fix up the land in the area. Shaka was ravaged by a natural disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should definitely help me recover. You should 100% help me recover. I'm going to sell this Diplo favor though. Whenever you're taking cities, you actually lose all your Diplo favor because we're losing 11 per turn. So if you don't sell it, you're just going to lose it anyway. 27 gold for 30 turns is worth selling. Triggers the Eureka for two random techs from the industrial area. Reveals oil. Yeah. No complaints here. Ooh, we got the offshore oil right in our wheelhouse. Good stuff. We're still behind quite a bit in science, especially on Cleo. Oh, we got lots of oil. Hell yeah. We actually don't have that many units. Like a small heavily promoted army is my favorite way of doing things. And I like that we're actually doing that strategy. I mean, you can fight me or not fight me. I don't really care. Oh, Greece is getting in on it. Mohenjo Daro also getting in on it. Not nice. All right, I think this vampire is going to come over here. This swordsman going to come over here. That'll be enough defense. This crossbow is going to come down here. Yeah, this guy's not going to be an issue at all. Just having an army is, it, it, it just is. Like, it's just the best. I'm going to get these guys into pillaging position. Oh, that's a bad tile to be on. This was a mistake. Getting hit by both walls is very bad. Gonna build the market there. So now we have the market and the bank, which is really nice. Is there any good districts kind of sticking out here? This dam will be done in one turn. I mean, I think that leaves the commercial hub is an obviously good pick. It's not really a good campus and commercial hubs are clutch. Like those trade routes are very important. Just getting a couple traders out so we can maximize our trade slots will be helpful. I've made a mess of that up there a little bit though. Yeah, now the siege tower is gone, yeah. That feels pretty bad. If I can get anti-cav though. We did it. We gained five combat strength. Clutch. The siege tower was the only reason. We oh, they got Renaissance walls now anyway. How far away are we from field cannons? Not that far. I suppose we need bombards, but what we really need is observation balloons with the bombards. We'll just come back and hang out. We'll just retreat. All right, they got Renaissance walls now, so the siege tower is not going to work. In terms of a gameplay point of view for the tutorial aspect of this video, we've kind of done now what we can do with our pike and shot units. You know, we had a lot of fun pike and shot armies roaming around. What we need now is a way to break down these walls. The way we were doing that was with with the siege tower and that was obviously very effective but now that they have renaissance walls we can't just like meat shield our way through everything so i think what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to come back get some ball bards and then reevaluate our our position as we head up towards pesh and buddha and all of these places we could also try the other kind of strategy here which would be to come down here where there aren't any walls yet to like olympia and start taking some of these cities while we're waiting which we might do and we'll see how that goes i'm gonna promote reina here double adjacency bonuses give us a little more gold awesome stuff we have factories now factories are going to be a huge boost for us anywhere we have industrial zones so let's first get this big factory out of the way here this is going to be really really helpful there we are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a plan right now, courtesy of Burly Gamer in the Twitch chat. This is something that we don't normally get to do very often, so I kind of forgotten about it as a strategy. Mostly when I go Victor down to Embrasure, what I'm really looking for is that free promotion on the spies that you build in the Victor city. But Victor also gives free promotions to the units you buy or train just generally. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually move Victor all the way up to, we'll call it Gior, I think. We'll probably all the way up to Gior should be fine. And then once victor's established we can buy bombards here that have a free promotion right away which gives us a little bit of wiggle room to use these bombards to start taking down these walls in any case uh well, it'll allow us to move bombards around that have promotions and that'll help with the problem we have right now that these renaissance walls are kind of in our way so great call out great strategy we're going to use it hopefully to good effect here i'm torn between going for the holy site buildings and the campus buildings we do really need to catch up in science very very quickly but also the faith is a huge reason why we're 
we're going to be able to war for the rest of this game. So I think we do need that faith income to be able to buy enough units, especially for buying them in the Victor City, which I think is the best way to be doing this. The next thing we're going to really need is flight. Now, I also want railroads and I also want military academy. So there's a little bit of jockeying around here that's going to be tough because what we really need here is flight so we can start getting some aerodromes down and that's going to be our way into killing Cleopatra for sure possibly Greece as well so we're gonna need this we also really do want railroads we really really do we have a big empire we got to get people moving through it we can get military engineers everywhere to build the railroads very quickly we'll stick with astronomy and see how we do Coliseum we got the Coliseum sounds. though the Coliseum, the Coliseum is a huge pickup flows. for us. It's going to really help all of these Mansa Musa cities that we've acquired flows. with amenities. Those amenities are going to make sure our yields are staying nice and high. It's going to be able to distribute the rest of those amenities to other cities that need them. Coliseum is a massive pickup for any kind of domination game if you can get it. This builder is going to come and fix all of this. I guess we'll grab the bank. Yeah, he's building walls. He's probably just hit steel. We are finally in the era of siege stuff now. Now we really need actual bombards. We can't just use our melee units over and over again. This vampire can build another vampire castle, which is interesting. I'm going to worry about killing these units first, though. I want to kill these units with the vampire nearby to get him boosted up. We can keep a city. Nekin. Nekin's an interesting city. I'd like to build a... I would really like to build a um encampment right here. Yeah, I'm not going to wait for a builder. I'm just going to chuck that encampment down. I think that's worth grabbing. Get some trade routes going from some different places. I'm interested in building an Aconda, but we, what we really need to is these science buildings. 42 turns for a university, hey? Jeez. I guess we're filing that under purchasable. Can buy two bombards? We can buy two bombards, give them different promotions, and then combine them together for a core that has different promotions. Yeah, I spread the production out to some of these cities that are still building infrastructure. I'm going to take this peace deal here. There's no reason for me not to. I still have to get uh, all my units set up and ready for the next kind of battle here. So we're going to accept this peace. It's just going to be free gold for a little bit here. I don't think in the next 30 turns we're going to be able to take out Cleopatra. So I'm going to try my best to be friends with Cleo and she now hates us. Cool. So Cleo doesn't want to be my friend. Hopefully she does want to be my friend next turn or else things are going to go poorly for us. Now that we're not actively fighting anyone for a few turns, 40 gold and 10 faith is massive. 10 culture and 10 gold is a decent percentage, though. I'm going to chuck that card in for a little bit. 40 gold and 10 faith is a lot. But we just got to get through this tech tree as quickly as possible. We're not going to get another government for a hot minute here, so that's not ideal. Coming up to natural history might be worth it, though. We have the archaeological museums. Build two shipyards for the railroads boost. Do we get one shipyard already? Yeah, one more shipyard boosts railroads for us, which might be a huge pickup. Because railroads will make this a whole much or a whole bunch easier. Have two forts constructed in your territory. Both constructed by a military engineer. I think I can get both of these boosts. Five turns for a military engineer is a lot though. Yeah, we're gonna need the military engineer anyway, so let's do that. I'm fine with that. We did get Romeo and Juliet though. That's gonna be a little extra culture, and we'll take any extra culture we can get right now. Trying to move towards the next government is very, very important. I wonder what I like here. A campus would be nice. There's just not a good campus available. I mean, I like mausoleum for us here. Grab a builder. I think we just build mausoleum. We did get the first circumnavigation. That is going to give us another golden age, which is pretty clutch. Just knowing that we're going to have a, a pretty permanent golden age this game. It takes the pressure off having to build the Taj Mahal. I think getting a builder here is also important so we can build the vampire castle. I think you build the vampire castle right here. The problem is you can't work these tiles. You could build it right here, though. You could build your vampire castle right here and get a bunch of cool stuff in it. Might as well buy the university. Yeah, let's get this vampire castle right here. It's not the best vampire castle. I also do want to start getting the coal. So we got crew weapons, grape shot, and then we're just going to combine these together. Once we combine them together, they're going to have both promotions. So when defending and against land units, so that's good. So we're going to put this here, which means we want to put a lumber mill here. Venice is going to be important to get through if we can. I would rather take Taruga just for the bonus to our Diplo quarter. The whistle banking is just useless now, which really sucks because we had a lot of um, production and food from trading with Egypt. It does give us the ability to put another card in though. You know, 27 gold, probably what you got to pick. It gives us enough gold to buy a bunch of buildings with, which is nice. Getting rid of Venice would be huge if we could do it. Mohenjo would be huge if we could do it as well. Uh, I'm going to pillage this though. Probably with the vampire. Give me that holy site faith, please. Hey, yes, 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 yes. Yay, 
bring your units. What do we want? All your units. When do we want them? Right now. Now, do I keep the bombard up here or do I bring him down? Bringing the bombard down does make some sense, especially if we can take Mohenjo-Daro. But like, it also doesn't make any sense at all because this is obviously the best spot for the training. But I guess if we're not fighting up here right now. Flight's important. I think field cannons at this point are slightly more important than flight. Steam power is also quite important. I can buy another shipyard. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit into ballistics here. Yeah, I think a spy is a good pickup. Where's Victor at? Let's get Victor going. Oh. Oh, but we want to buy more units up here, don't we? How many more promoted units do we want to buy up here? I think we probably want to buy them in Plymouth now. We just need Victor to be in the right spot by the time it's done. Um, this ability here giving us 0.5 gold per district in our internal trade routes is very handy because eventually we're going to be at war with everyone and won't be able to... Um... There's Taruga. And we won't be able to um, trade with everyone, right? 182 science starts to feel a little bit better now. Bro, 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 bro. What are you doing? Both vampires getting juiced, baby. Both vampires getting absolutely juiced. There we are. You'll love to see it. So this is going to be a vampire castle right here. So lumber mill, lumber mill, mine, farm. Now I do want to build two forts. I don't think I've ever built a fort with the military engineer. No, no, I just haven't unlocked them yet. Classic. Classic. So I can get the boost. Oh. It's taking me five turns to come up here just to get the boost or just five turns to build this. Whatever. Not ideal, but we'll survive. I'll just keep trading with Egypt for now. The good news is the military engineers will exist for when we want the railroads to go down, which will be shortly. Yeah, I'll build another one, actually. We're going to want lots of railroads going down. We're going to need this coal to make it happen, though. This coal is going to be critical. Let's buy another shipyard, though. Two turns till that lighthouse is done. We'll buy the shipyard there. I am trying to use Venice. Just like as a possible entry point into Olympia here. I think this land is kind of right for it to try and seize Venice. And the Diplo Quarter is going to do a lot to help us with that. I will be pillaging this for faith, though. Appreciate it. We'll grab a monument here just for the loyalty and then a university, however long that takes. We are going to need builders almost everywhere, though. There's so much land here for us to grab. And there's just no, especially without railroads, nowhere great to be spamming out builders. Yeah, I'm going to hit him just to try and get him down a little bit. So maybe the vampires can sneak a hit in later. Cool. So this vampire got beefed up a little bit more. That's always good. You love to see it. I'm going to send this dude in to pillage this. I send this vampire in over here to try and pillage some stuff. Now, what do we want this builder to do? There's just so much, right? Like, you can just build forever up here. Chop all three of these things out. Then we want to chop the mausoleum here, so we'll do that. But the industry here will help with production a little bit. We'll buy the shipyard, so that gives us the boost we want for steam power. I guess grab a bank. We're going to be rolling in cash, though. I don't know how helpful that's going to be. At some point, you just have too much money. Victor is established here now, so we can buy another bombard. I don't even know where the bombard can hit Mohenjo from, but also I don't think the bombard is going to do a whole lot to Mohenjo. Just kind of considering it has 80 strength and all that. That's the next thing, dude, is building all these railroads is going to take 150. Like, by the time you build the railroads, they're almost useless, right? Ooh, pretty happy to have a fully promoted pike and shot. That's exciting stuff. I think if the vampire goes up here and gets a pillage next turn, he's going to be fine. I don't think the bombard can attack over the hills, but we'll see. I doubt it. I always think I understand how the vision works, and then I never understand how the vision works. Grab that for one turn real quick. Mobilization is pretty clutch. I think the next step is just our next our next government. As much as I love democracy, we're going to go communism in this game. Communism just gives us a lot of what we're looking for, plus 10% science, a little bit of extra production. Fascism is a good military pick. Getting five combat strength and reduced war weariness and production towards units is quite nice. It's just having four red cards here is woof. Four red cards is pretty rough. Maybe let's go up to ideology then, and then we'll we'll figure out after that what we want to do. But four red cards is rough. All right, we're going to choose Venice now, which is cool. That'll give us another inroad to Olympia here if we want it. The Bombard can't attack over the hills. I figured that. Bombard could come down and take out Rhodes, though. Yeah, I mean, I think we just got to come in and murder Rhodes as our way in. Like, I don't, I don't see another way in here. I can't take out Mohenjo. I can't pillage that for gold. We're going to get our field cannon armies, our Bombard cores, our all of that kind of stuff, and we're going to head through. How many more turns till this spy is done? Four turns, so we do need to move Victor over. Zulu, ooh, ooh. there we go. That spy is going to get the promotion. That'll feel good. Yeah, let's grab the archaeologist. We have more coal up here. You know, let's not do that yet. Grab a builder and then the archaeologist. All right, I don't want to chop out the trader. I want to chop out the mausoleum. So let's do that. And then let's chuck in a mausoleum at Halicarnassus. That would be a huge pickup for us if we can sneak it. All right, now we have field cannons. Now what I would like to do is use some of my gold to put the card in. I'll save way more than 210 gold for doing this. And now what we can do is we can just upgrade all our, our good old crossbowmen boys. 
the field cannon army boys and then these guys will these guys will hit pretty hard there we are and scorched earth is now boosted building two field cannons done and done that feels great what do we want next i do want railroads very quickly and i think we're heading into flight next i don't know i mean i do want cavalry and military units as well or military academies I don't think we need military academies as much now that we have Grandmaster's Chapel. Is there a good holy site here? Oh, I don't have the population. 10 turns. It's definitely a good neighborhood. Yeah, let's put a neighborhood down. If we can get high population, we should. Having an Aconda in this area wouldn't be the worst either, just for military engineer purposes. We're going to need a lot of them. We're going to need railroads being built everywhere, every turn, all the time. Yeah, I'm going to check the Aconda down here, actually. I don't think it's the best Aconda ever. We're going to chuck it right up here. At least it'll give us a place down here to build more military engineers. We're going to need heaps of them. We also don't have anywhere over here to build them that kind of sucks all right so this coal is going now two charges left are you the castle guy which one of you has the castle not you i think you do we're rolling baby we are rocking and rolling no one can stop us we got a hundred piking shots and we're moving yeah i'll take that experience we don't have a core for him yet but that's okay yeah this is the castle guy so you're gonna come here 1200 hey that seems like we can just buy this university <laughs> I just murder this crossbow. So the vampires got a little better now. But yeah, we're just going to overwhelm the city here with the piking shots, and then they can just deal with the bombards and the field cannon armies and all that. Uh, we'll definitely grab the Watt. I just want as much faith as possible. Part of the reason we wanted to move Victor is so the spy has an automatic promotion. So keep tabs on that. We're going to send him to Cleopatra, depending on the promotion we get. But if you get a spy right away and it's like, dude, you're going to be really good at siphoning funds. Ugh, chef's kiss. But having a spy that's good at something right away is very important. So the spy is here. He's going to get that free promotion. And we can choose recruit partisans, disrupt rocketry, or breach dam. I'm going to assume that she has some dams in her empire. You're right. Cleo does not need them. In my head, I was just like, ooh, rivers. But yeah, you're right. She doesn't need them. Well, I guess breach dam then. We're going to send him not to Cleo. I am going to build another spy though. I think this is a fun play. There's not really any rockin' districts here. Nothing fantastic. You could get a decent industrial zone in. I think that might be worth it just for the possible engineer points. The zoo would be quite nice. What I do want, though, is some more builders. There's just lots to build everywhere. Uh, if we get Suze Mohenjo, that would be ideal. I'm going to go in to get the factories a little bit of a boost here. All right, so we're back to the domination aspect of this strategy here. I'm not sure how much of the last, like, 20 turns got cut as we were just, like, moving units down from Gior <laughs> all the way down here. That'll be up to Onvar's in the edit. But now that we're here, we're kind of just doing an overwhelm strategy. So what we need is these bombards to get leveled up, right? And we need them to be able to take down these walls. So these are only 55 strength walls. And as you can see a bombard is not going to do a ton of damage to it but what this is going to allow us to do is to start breaking down some of these cities and getting these bombards promoted so that when they do have three four promotions they're going to be upgraded to artilleries and we should be good to go there especially once we have observation balloons these observation balloons will actually give them plus one range and so getting our bombards ready to go and promoted by then is, is just a good strategy things are looking up for us here we got our kind of overwhelm promote the bombard strategy hanging on down here mostly this game is going to really really speed up once we hit planes not only are we going to hit planes and that gives us bombers over here which will just be ridiculous but also we are going to get observation balloons which makes all our bombards a million times better so this is a bit of a lull in the action but it is going to spike up again once we figure out flight and aluminum and all of that stuff we are catching up in science here you know science is additive and she's been ahead for a lot of the game so she'll be ahead probably till the end of the game i don't think we'll ever eclipse cleo in science but we are making a move here to catch up with her and to make sure we're not too far behind which is awesome we are starting to get some railroads in here to build the railroads we need iron and coal both of which we have a lot of so hopefully we're going to get multiple military engineers in on the action here and building railroads between all of our cities just to help move units around just a little bit quicker because it's going to be a bit of a struggle so we're promoting our bombards here things are going great field cannon army is also really good at, at taking out cities like this and getting promotions which is great so we're going to keep promoting them as well Ooh, okay a couple of standard ages that's not too bad campus districts adjacency give us production i think is is handy a special cost is belly plus 15 percent production awards military units i just don't think we need that i think we're buying any units we're using faith right now anyway so i think that's probably fine now that railroads is unlocked i'm going to come down for the military academies and then up to flight and we will get everything on the way hopefully we can get the sanitation boost by building two neighborhoods 
but once we get into flight, I think we're going to be pretty easy breezy here. Two gold and 200 envoys. I'm going to save this great merchant to build some corporations. I just don't think we need 200 gold at the moment. I'm going to save you for some corporations. So you just chill. We have lots of extra stuff to trade, but Cleo is not really offering a whole lot right now. Yeah, she's going to give us seven gold for 30 turns for four luxury resources. They have diamonds though, and they'll give us diamonds for a really good deal. So I will take that for the amenities. Now attacking this with the pike and shot is a major victory. The only problem with that is that I want to get the experience on these units. I'm not taking roads because I want to have roads. I'm taking roads because I want experience on those units. So I'm actually not going to attack with the pike and shot just to maximize the amount of experience we're getting. It may seem like a, a weird strategy, but I think it's going to be effective for us. So now this guy is good at breaching dams. We're going to have to send him somewhere to breach those dams. I think Pharsalos is a great pick. Head to Pharsalos, breach a dam. I think you'll get that done before we take that city. Although that timing could be slightly off. Oh, you want coal really bad. Hey, Cleo, no, I need my coal. We're building railroads now, baby. We don't have an Aconda over here to actually get railroads going in this area, which really sucks. It's not ideal, but let's get the railroad heading in this direction. So when we declare war on Egypt, we can just move units through. Grants a warrior monk with one promotion. Boo. But it does give us modern era coverage. So I think that's worth doing. I am build another campus here. It's not a good campus, but hey, it's a campus and we like campuses. There we go. Now these bombards are getting some hits in. Oh, I do want to move and promote this. Promoting a ranged unit to expert marksman gives it two attacks per turn, which makes it very valuable. This is exactly why we want to make sure we're giving the opportunity for promotions to these units and not the pike and shots right now, because we're going to rely on these range units quite a bit to break down these cities going forward. We also want to make sure we take this with a... With the musket? Yeah, with the musket, so it becomes a musket army. I think that's the best value play we can make. I do want to sneak this vampire in to see what we're able to do here so we need oh, still quite a bit of experience here to, to get this guy fully leveled so i don't think we're going to be able to here but that's okay you can't get everyone fully leveled in one city what we have done though is completely take out roads that's going to give it a musketman army oh it just goes to a core interesting so you don't get to skip the steps you just get to the core still worth doing we're going to raise roads though rose is a city we don't need it gives us nothing it takes up a man in these it has no districts bye I want this factory. I also want an Aconda here so we can get military engineers in the area. Yeah, let's build it on the road. I will buy the factory. I want the Aconda. There's lots to pillage over here for the vampy boy. So we'll, we'll get him doing that. There's only like one way in here though. And that's like through these tiles. This will be some era score here for building the first railroad between our cities. Look at that. And we're going to connect this railroad straight through this encampment here and straight up to Swanette. So we have a way to, to attack later. Uh, we can chop this out for the mausoleum. We haven't earned any great engineers yet, but we're probably going to. Um, are we getting a great engineer? We're getting 8.6.9. Yeah, we're doing okay. Triggers the one random tech from the mod modern era so that'll give us two random texts from the modern era the mausoleum gives us extra great engineer charges so that's very helpful do i have anywhere for this great work of art to go barely but we do we have so many extras hey i'm not giving you a 49 gold for 30 turns though i don't want to give her that many amenities i want her to suffer a little bit more i don't want to give her that many am am amenities we will be getting um this and another vamp castle though so that's very helpful is there anywhere just here really quick i can put a vamp castle that feels good like right here look at that i don't even have to think about that i'm putting a vamp castle right here it's not gonna be the best vamp castle but you have to you have to you have to play with getting it down early or making it really good and i'm gonna get both of these down right now yeah military engineer like legit i'm building railroads everywhere no one can stop me we're not upgrading units right now might as well get that back in public works would actually be sick right now but we need the science and culture yeah there's really nowhere these, this encampment is really well placed makes it hard to get in now that we have railroads and, and moving units isn't actually death i think getting some armies here might be smart i think now we can start building units especially because we're gonna get these vamp castles in all right that's fine that's good enough Done. That's a good vamp castle there. It's a good vampire castle here. Done and done. There we go. God, there's so much to work here. Hey, like, look at all these farm triangles we could throw down. Can I buy this factory yet? Yeah. You want to connect your railroads through your encampments. So when you build your units, they're just automatically on one. Yeah, I'm not getting a ton of gold anymore from this. So I think just going to Boom Shakalaka and getting the internal stuff is probably better. All right, you're going to breach the dam. Man, it takes so long to gain sources and then breach a dam, hey? Are we getting that great engineer? I'm going to buy it with faith. 
I just want to make sure we get it. Four turns for the armory. Good God. So we're getting two free techs from the modern era here. Steel is huge. That's a great one. There's an encampment. He's really done a good job in, in making this hard to attack. Doesn't matter where you go, you're getting double hit. All right. So we got our little railroad here. I think we can come back and make sure that railroad cuts all the way down here. I'd rather almost just come straight down to Niani though, instead of through candy at all. But I guess that makes sense as a way to go. Oh, just survived, eh? Skin of the teeth kind of thing. That is um rather unfortunate. All right, now what we can do though is we can double up the railroad. Like one just goes in front of the other and builds the railroad all the way down. If this spy is in home territory, all your spies operate at plus one level. Pretty clutch. We're just gonna chuck that in the Magnus city for now. Grab the military academy. That means we can move Victor up and Victor moving up can be great because we're gonna want Victor to be buying units probably somewhere around Plymouth. Big farm triangles coming in though. Same here. We can get an industry here too. Lots of good stuff we can patch up over here. I can take out, yeah, with one of these shots, I can take out this guy, which will give the vampire a bit of a promotion, which is nice. And then we'll hit the city with the next shot. And as you can see, we're slowly chipping away. It's not a quick thing, but we're not trying to race here. Right, in, right up until we get the observation balloons, it's going to be a slow burn through all of these places, right? And so I'm not fussed if it's taken a hot minute. Medieval and Renaissance, yeah, you can go. Forms a core out of a land military unit. I think everyone is the core though okay we'll find a unit for you so now we're gonna do the one two step here where you come ahead build the railroad and then you come ahead build the railroad and then we're just gonna walk over each other all the way down the coast yeah i'm gonna build this railroad all the way to the coast here and then come over this way yours losing loyalty that's not good what's the cheapest unit that i can purchase with faith oh, let's just get a skirmisher then we have governors that we can move. liang doesn't matter so liang goes to gior that's a start Oh yeah, Farcelos is going down real fast. As you guys can see, like, as you start chipping away at things, it starts getting quicker. The first couple hits weren't very inspiring, but we're, we're getting through it now. That's a major victory here. We'll take this. This is also gonna give us Oxford University, hey? There it is. Farcelos is ours, baby. And we got the flight boost. Yo. I mean, our, our spy got kicked out, but hey. That's gonna be a huge science boost and Oxford University and a free place to pump up our units. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I would like to keep this city. Also, inheriting an encampment gives us a way to get military engineers in the area. Buy you. I'm going to buy you. Big win. Let's get Victor down here. Because what we want is to buy these units, right? We really want to buy units to merge with these bombards. And we have the faith to do it, so that's huge. Yeah, you're going to counter spy Pingala. I'm going to say neutralized governor is unavailable if I can. Oh, I should sell all this Diplo favor too. Earn double points towards great generals. No great writers, that's fine with me. And fabricate scandal, whatever, sure. Would you like 179 Diplo favor? You would, 58 gold per turn for 30 turns. What a deal. Oh, we have one in candy now too. So once these guys get to candy, we're already just gonna start the railroad down here. This is why you need lots of military engineers to build these, right? Cause they've all got to connect to each other, but you also don't have a lot of time to make it work. Uh, let's choose Mohenjo cause we can. Done, that'll give us some era score. Gives us a really good location here if we want to levy some units. We're not wasting any time. We're immediately getting the bombards back in action, getting them promotions. Yeah, this encampment's not gonna last long. Now we have flight. Flight in itself is not a huge deal other than we can now get our, so can I buy a military engineer here? Yes, thank God. Aerodrome's done and that is nice. That is very, very nice. We wanna get our aerodromes kind of done, dusted, finished up, all of those fun things. What is helpful here though, is we get these observation balloons, which allow our bombards to attack from farther away so once we get through this encampment 900 gold so once we get 900 gold the observation balloon is gonna get these bombards to attack from very far distances which is very nice it's exactly what you want this to look like but once we're done here though we can actually have our bombards attack from these two tiles and just stay out of range of athens the entire time which is just very helpful i do want to go into radio if we're gonna get bombers we need aluminum so we might as well give that a quick try wouldn't mind corporations let's do it two turns into corporations and then into radio sweet so we're two Two turns away from a good observation balloon. I think at this point though, the field cannons can probably take out this encampment. What I would rather do is actually grab some bombards to make into armies. So I'm not concerned about the promotion, especially for this guy, because he already has both possible promotions. So it's kind of just whatever. So I'm just gonna buy a single bombard. Doesn't matter about the promotion and we're just gonna make you an army. Then I'm gonna buy another bombard here. This one though, I do care about the promotion because he only has crew weapons, which is the one of the promotions. And so I do want to make sure we get the other one. Oh, there we go. So we're gonna get a three promo bombard here in a minute. That'll be a core. That's a good start. Uh, vampire, take it, dude. Woo! 
Ooh, I'm going to pillage all of this stuff and the great library. That's fun. Uh, I do want to build an aerodrome here immediately. I also want a neighborhood really badly. Let's build both. Aerodrome's going right here. Neighborhood's going right here. Uh, we don't actually need the aerodrome yet until we have bombers. So let's build a neighborhood first. Air defense initiative. Yeah, whatever. A tax collector. Give me that money. Now we can get some railroads on this side of the map. How do we feel? We feel pretty good. Can you stop pillaging my holy site, my dude? You're the worst. Uh, I don't want to give her amenities if I can help it. Oh, we're already collecting some oil. Oh, yeah. 10 oil is fine. 10 oil is fine. I just want to make sure we have enough next turn to buy an observation balloon. 60% production towards civilian units in the host city. Building that corporation, baby. A oh, 500 gold and two envoys? Dude, give me that second corporation. Give me that incense corporation down here. Factory? Yeah, let's do that. I want more great engineers. What are we doing? Wonder construction? We got 10 points, 6.9. Oh, maybe we'll get there. I pillage. Oh, dude, yeah. Give me that sweet, sweet double culture pillage. So now that we have the observation balloon, if it's adjacent to a siege unit, it can attack really far. So now we can just bop Athens. This is where things get really crazy if you're playing a domination game and you're stuck you have no idea what to do get some siege units bombards are great and then just get an observation balloon and then your your siege units can attack cities from far enough away that they can't be attacked and you can just bop anything you want i will take the double science pillage i'm on i'm in a hurry you're moving here bombard oh you still gotta get promoted cool now we're gonna make another army no okay whatever hello I mean, that was dumb, but whatever. Ooh, and a free kill. Look at that. Um, I'm not going to use you, but it's nice to have you. Welcome to the team, Mr. Settler. Are you still losing loyalty here? 20 turns for real? Is there anything we can chop for food or population or something? Not really, hey? Mm, that kind of sucks. I do want an Akonda up here, though. We shall be building one. Yeah! Woo! What a... Why is this capital not worked? What are you... <laughs> Get some builders, my guy. Pericles is an idiot, man. Pericles is not smart. Get some builders. All right, we got to keep Athens because it's the capital. But remember, all we're doing is collecting capital cities, right? So we actually don't need to go after Greece anymore. We can just leave Greece alone. I don't think that's very fun. And until we have railroads to take us all the way back, it's going to take 100 years to get up to where Cleopatra is. I probably want to take Sparta and Corinth and then we'll stop. But we are able right now to stop going after Greece. We've kind of hit what we need to hit. We've done done what we need to do i do want to get these 15 amenities that's a huge amount of amenities 18 production and seven gold it's not the best but we'll take it all right so now we're we're fully connected from the capital down to niani and down, so now we're connected from the capital from up here all the way down through here which is a good start with the railroad next up we need to be more connected through this area we just need more engineers for that hey can you stop my guy like look what are you doing we should probably get a military engineer here to start building railroads up. That is my thinking. Look, like this is wild. And then the observation balloon's here. So now we can just attack Sparta right away. Bro, this is fun. We're having a good time. Yeah, now that we can just connect, we're going to come all the way across. We just need lots of military engineers in this area. I feel like Hungary is going to come and kill me. Maybe even Cleo. Cleo would be not ideal. Nope, just Hungary. Cool. Cleo's fine. They're hanging out. But what's key about this part of the strategy is that it's the bombards that can't be attacked by the city, and that's what's important here. Village for culture. Cool, do we have aluminum? We are already collecting aluminum, which is a good sign. It means we have some somewhere. Or uh, a city-state friend has some. Either way, we're happy. Ooh, three aluminum just out of range. You had Zanzibar that has some. And Zulu. Uwu. In any case, we, we have access to some aluminum. Cool. So we can build planes. That means we do want to go straight for advanced flight. Seven turns, because now we know we can build planes. So once that's done, we are going to purchase two planes in Boom Shakalaka, and we are going to just immediately declare war on Cleo and start taking her down. That'll be the plan. I do want a hangar. So that way we'll be fighting with planes towards Cleo, our units coming up through Greece, and then we should be able to win this game pretty quickly will be our general strategy. Fascism or communism? I think communism's better. I just like the card distribution here better than fascism. I don't have a need for four. I mean, the war weariness is nice, but I'm just gonna go communism. I think I'm gonna value the war weariness and combat strength is nice. I'm gonna value getting the extra science as a higher priority. Do I build an aerodrome down here? I think it's worth building one down here just to have more planes available or more places to build planes. I'm gonna save my money to buy planes. They're 2,400 gold to start off. We should have enough money for some planes and then we'll just immediately go berserk. Once we have two bombers, one 
in Shaka Khan and one in, even in both in Nekin, we could build an airstrip right here too. We could take out Abydos in like 10 seconds. Swinette is also easy to take down in like 10 seconds. I think we should come up the Swinette way because all we need is Rakadet. We don't actually need all these other cities, right? As you approach the end of a domination game, all you're looking for is the capitals. You don't need to take every other city in between. Oh, this isn't very nice. Um, before we get those planes, actually, how, how quick is steel? Six turns for steel. It's not ideal to not have any units up here. 660 for a field cannon. All right, all right, all right. I think that that city might just die and that's okay. It's not the, it's not a city we're relying on. So I think if it does, that's all right. This is where having the um, railroads could be very helpful. If you have everything connected by railroads, you can just build the units anywhere and they'll show up in 10 seconds, right? Loyalty might actually be helpful just briefly. Even just to help Gior for another couple of turns. Now, is there any way to turn this into my favor here? I mean, obviously, we're just going to come and murder him in like 10 turns. So I'm not too worried about that. I don't think there's much I can do up there, to be honest. Maybe we'll just lose the city. Sweet. So this is just going to be a loss. We'll take it back in like two minutes once we have planes. We go and that's it baby there we go we're gonna trade gior Yo. for sparta it's a pretty it's a pretty decent trade losing the oracle isn't my favorite thing ever but it's not my least favorite thing ever either take a quick hit on that field cannon i do want corinth poor la campus here yeah we'll keep sparta it's a good city well, let's just repair everything that needs repairing that's the most efficient way to do things it is okay we will survive we are now getting communism which will enhance our science so many choices so many choices yeah extra 14 science well, well oh, logistics is very nice too though ah uh, the 14 science is fine logistics is logistics is one of the most underrated cards in the game but i'm gonna i do want these 16 amenities just to make sure we're keeping those up no warriors from combat in my territory 100 production for modern atomic and information area support era support units dude sure why not whatever whatever let's just have some fun whatever let's do that give me the medics we don't even have medics yet must give in core to a line infantry tree now i need to save for the planes i do want to purchase at least one plane hello cleopatra five oil five like just enough to be nice but not enough to be like helpful yeah yeah there we go there we go like just enough to be nice but not enough for her to build a whole army that can murder us cool now i can definitely afford a plane in two turns Pike and shot destroyed by a Greek city center. Oh, that's really unfortunate though. Yeah, we'll just wait then. We'll, we'll come back out. The city center attacks are stronger than I thought they might be. I will pillage these farms. I don't want to pillage the encampment though. Let's build the, I mean, probably the war department though, right? All units heal up to 20 hit points when they eliminate a unit. Gives a governor title. I think the war department, probably the best one for us. Just It's, it's very thematic. Let's grab that. And now we got a railroad to Mohenjo-Daro. We can't put one in Mohenjo-Daro though. Oh, let's buy a bomber 2240 hey that's not too bad gives us the five era score that is good we will move the bomber up and then we will declare war on cleo probably next turn decisive victory that'll pump the vampire up that's fine oh we took him right out hell yeah okay cool that worked out now we can still get our bombard hits in oh yeah look at that we're cruising we're having a good time still from here though i can defend Yerevan and kill a bunch of her units which is probably worth doing now that we're way ahead in science i think this is a great time to just declare a surprise war on cleo and just start using our planes once you hit this plane power spike it's very destructive what you're able to do like honestly just very very destructive because you're able to just kind of come in here and just grab a plane and just like one shot this ranger core or the you can just one shot almost anything that you want so let's get this get that out of the way there she is just dead just straight up dead yeah we'll start firing on abydos why not wouldn't mind getting a cavalry army in if we could or even a cavalry corps that just becomes a cavalry army when we take that city right a cavalry corps with a promotion and then it just comes and becomes a, an army i think is worth doing now what we can do is we can completely clear this out for the buff now both these vampires get a little buff you move up and now we can completely clear you out for the buff and now these vampires are getting really strong together so that's fine Yay! All right, so the vampire got a little more powerful and gets that 20 health from the war department, so that's nice. Delays taking Corinth by a turn. That's not the worst, though. And we want this cavalry corps to be up there to, to take it anyway. Two times flanking bonus movement. We'll head down that side. Lots of stuff here that we do want to grab quick. I wouldn't mind grabbing flood barriers. I just don't think we really need them just because we're not really polluting too much. I think going into refining will be important, though. We do want that oil. It's going to give us a lot of good yields in those cities, and it's going to start uh, stockpiling that for us. I think at this point, contract 
character is good. It's nice to be able to buy districts if you need them. Six turns for a bomber is not too bad at all. That's kind of normal. Like, there's just nothing you can do. Like the bomber just comes in. It immediately just disables so much of your army. We're losing a lot of our gold per turn because of the war we just hit, which isn't ideal. We do get quite a bit of gold from our own. I trade with, uh, do I feel good about trading with Zanzibar? On the whole, I feel fine with it. They're not going to take out all of these. Taruga is more dangerous though. That's more dangerous. You're a van? That's less dangerous. We're still getting quite a bit of gold, though. 261 is not terrible. Sewer? No, no, no. We need some units up here. I like cavalry armies. They take a minute, but they're, they're good stuff. You've gained sources all the way up here. Yeah, breach the dam! There's no real reason to go for professional sports. Capitalism is fine. I will be taking Corinth with this cavalry corps. That is now a cavalry army. Hooray! Okay, we can stop murdering Greece now. We got the good... That's all we wanted. We got the really good campus. We've got all the good cities. Uh, make peace. I get all your cities. Cool. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, so that was fun. We took Greece. We got the capital. We don't need these two cities. Getting the arrow score for completely knocking him out would be nice. We just got to move everything over to where we're going in Plymouth now, though. All right. So now this railroad comes all the way through. So once we get around here, we should be able to just move all our units up to where we need them. All right. Now we can start taking out some Egyptian cities. Now, I think we should start in Swanat just because that's closer to Rakadet. But there is something to be said by coming through Abydos. That's just such a farther route through that I think we're going to do this. You're going to go to Shaka Khan. Now we need an observation balloon here. I'm just going to get Magnus to have another governor available for loyalty purposes, just in case as we're taking Egyptian cities, if we need one. What we need is a unit up here who can actually see the city of Swanat, which is where this can get a little bit tricky. And we're taking Abydos might be a good idea because you have to have vision of the city center. An observation balloon would be helpful. This cavalry would be helpful. We do need a military engineer to come up here and build an airstrip, though. So we'll do that next turn. Um, I can just take Abydos then and just hit it. Modern and atomic area. Yeah, we'll take that. Need one, need one of them. Research labs provide four science. I don't think we have any research labs yet, but we'll take that. Cool, I can buy another bomber, so I'll do that. Cool, you're coming up to build an airstrip. Because now I can move those bombers here to attack Swinat. Or I guess in this case... Yeah, we'll just take out the infantry. This is what I mean that like these bombers just give you so much flexibility and being able to just take out whatever you want. I think I'm just going to wait at this point for build builders until we hit some of those power tile improvements because we're not going to have power otherwise. So this plane doesn't need to move up. Both of these do though. There we go. So now what we've done is we've set up this airstrip here with this military engineer, which is a really good play that you can make in these domination games. So you don't have to build aerodromes everywhere. You can build these on most flatland tiles. They don't have to be in your territory but they will get swallowed up if they are in uh, someone else's territory so they can be your territory or neutral and you know getting these bombards to be artillery is nice we already have the oil for it so why not yeah we're just gonna get another bomb like we just need planes planes will win the game for us that's our strategy now we need two more capitals we need to get up towards buddha here and we need to get up towards rakadet we don't need to worry about any of the other cities oh yeah now that we're on the railroad again we're just connected so you can just whoop this is why the railroads are really nice once you're on them you're you're good to go but now we have three bombers attacking Swinette and that's just gonna be GG for Swinette. Like it's only gonna take a couple of turns here for us to completely melt through the city. And this is the whole point of this bomber strategy. This is why you can just wait till planes to do any domination at all is that it just melts through cities so fast and you can just maneuver your way through anywhere really quickly. Steel's coming in next turn so we can upgrade those bombards to artilleries which is exactly what we're gonna wanna do. Drones are massive. Getting the drones will give extra combat strength to the artillery on top of the range which is very helpful. It's a helpful observation balloon upgrade we don't even have research labs yet that's pretty impressive let's head towards drones and i think drones artilleries and bombers are all we need i don't think we need a whole lot else so it's three turns for this cavalry i'm gonna faith buy a cavalry here i can actually faith buy a cavalry army which is a waste of faith because the core can just get a free army we'll just do that next turn you can just run up take swinette we're not gonna keep swinette we're just gonna raise it we just need the capital right we don't need to keep anything else in the middle all we're looking for right now is the capital um what's that gonna cost 930 gold i'm gonna put the card in for that not that that's a waste of money getting artillery armies is a great use of money we want to use one of the farther up bombers for this now he becomes an army. So now we're going to need a military engineer to move up and make an... So that, this is the question. If we keep Swanette, then we have a place to put planes here. If we don't, we just build an airstrip right here. I don't think we need Swanette. I don't think we need Swinette. It's going to be hard-ish to keep. It, is, it does have a good campus, though. Ah, right, let's keep Swinette. Whatever. We got Magnus just for this reason. There's not even any walls in the capital. Like, what is she doing? Come on. Um, I don't really want power plants. They're not my vibe. I am a fan in not this game, though. Although, you know, we have so much coal. Whatever. We have so much coal. Why not? 
There's so much coal. We're, we're not polluting the earth to... Yeah, let's get a couple power plants. Never mind. I lied. I lied. Those power plants are going to give us a lot of production down here. I don't think we'll need it, but they will give it to us. So that's good. I take one hit on Abydos so this cavalry can take it. Oh, uh, we'll hit Abydos twice. All right, we're going to raise this city. We don't need it, but we got the core unit. So that was fun. All right, we're going to move the cavalry up to Rakadet so we can attack with the bombers. We can see what we're doing. So we're gonna take out the capital really quick. We're just gonna keep that. And then we just gotta figure out Hungary and then we're done with this game. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this in. It's not a good card. I like the idea of building these support units really quickly though. Actually, I do wanna put the upgrade card in though. We don't need the loyalty anymore. Or I guess we don't need the 16 science anymore. 465 gold, yep. Uh, we can probably get the vampires heading up in this direction. A cavalry can come hang out. And we want some units in here to distract from what we're really gonna be doing here, which is using artillery to take out Gior. Are there any other units we're really waiting for not really you're doing renaissance and industrial era units we don't need you anymore instantly creates a bombard yeah you come over here then boom look at that you're just gonna sneak in you're gonna sneak in the side entrance we did successfully breach the dam which is great so now we can siphon funds or something i don't know we did an airstrip within 10 tiles of buddha right here is a great tile for it if we can get rid of the marsh oh you have two builds never mind you can do it sweet this military engineer can come up and build a airstrip as well because once, once we're done with Egypt, we're just going to move all the planes over. Like right now is a great time to start moving some of these planes over. Let's take Rakadet. It's the only Egyptian city we need. It's the capital. you love to see it. Oh, what a huge city. Yo, what a massive city. Um, yes, we will be taking it. We're going to throw Victor into Rakadet. Now we have control of Rakadet. Now we just need to blitz through to Buda, which will take us like 10 seconds with all of these planes. We uh, inherited the Alhambra. Logistics makes a lot of sense. So we can move units. I'm not even going to take the promotions. I'm just going to rebase all these guys. We've unlocked research labs for the first time, which is wild to think about. First research lab, baby. Four amenities. This is a great, great merchant to have. We'll grab it. Not one you want to make a corporation out of. Definitely one you want to use in your capital most of the time to get those amenities going. All right, by the time these artillery's coming, it's just not going to matter. I'll make peace with Cleo here just because we, we already have her capital. Done and done. Um, we don't need Gior. We're going to raise... Uh, can I not raise Gior? You cannot raise a major civilization's original capital city or a city that you or an ally founded or owned at the start of this war. Oh! Oh, cool. I forgot about this. Right. We owned this city at the start of this war. So now we have to keep the city. That's fine then. I just need a unit to go and give us vision of Buddha and the attack begins. That's all good then, because now we can just move this plane up to Gior. Ah, she works out in the end, doesn't she? Grab that airstrip here. This plane can move up to here. Next turn, we can attack with like 177 planes. All right, we're in the modern era. We're keeping our golden age. We're going to win maybe this turn, depending on how much damage the planes do. Very happy about this. I'll take Heartbeat of Steam again. One plane attack. No, nah, it won't be this turn. Big sad. All right, now I'm pretty confident next turn we'll win. Takes a shot here. Got to have the observation balloon. Oh, bomber comes in. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that's going to do it for this game. Bada bing, bada boom, bada bang. And you love to see it. You love to see it. I played Shaka. I told you guys I like Shaka. Shaka's fantastic. And we just won a domination game on Deity in a reasonable amount of time. You know, 207 turns. Not your quickest domination game ever. But without heroes or anything super crazy like that, it's it's not too bad. Made the most use out of all Shaka's abilities, which is great. Actually fought for the whole game instead of just getting planes and stuff. But what I'm hoping came across in the tutorial series and the way it was edited, that having a small, highly promoted army that's just like a goon squad that goes from city to city and causes a ruckus is really, really ideal. But I hope it also showcased how powerful planes can be because not only do planes allow you like we just did to really speed up your victory, but they allow you to not even play domination. Like if you want to win a domination game and you just want to take the capital cities, you can play a science game for the whole game. And then instead of just going for the space race stuff, once you unlock planes, just kill everyone. And that's another really good way to get a domination victory without dealing with the monotony of having to play a domination game for the whole game. Because it takes a long time. It's hard to do on Deity. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this little tutorial series here especially for watching on youtube where you get like the edited version and hopefully it's cut in a way that makes a lot of sense for you guys feel free to hit that like button the subscribe button check out the description below for links to the twitch where we're streaming right now or the discord or any of the other fun stuff but yeah thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one